In this video, I'm going to go over a PowerPoint presentation type program called SpiceUp. Now, SpiceUp is for Linux users, and if you found this video on YouTube, I will provide a link below the video that has a description, some features of it, how to install it, and the, how to use it. Now, let's first take a look at what the program is. The name of it is SpiceUp, which SpiceUp allows you Linux users to create simple and beautiful presentations. They look very similar to a PowerPoint presentation. As you can see here, there's not a lot of menus across the top and a lot of buttons to get intimidated with. It's very simple. Now, as you can see here, you basically have a title bar in top toolbar, then you have a second toolbar, and the second toolbar changes according to what you're doing within the presentation, and I'll show you that in a few moments. Here's some of the features that I got on this website. If you'd like to read more about it, you can go to Philip Scott Spice Up on GitHub for more information. Now, there's multiple ways to install it. The first way, and this is kind of the recommended way for the different Linux distributions. Click on the Flat Hub link, and it will take you to the program. If you've got your system set up to install flat packs, then you can click the install button to install it on your system. Actually, there's more description here that you can read about as well. The second method is the method that I chose. I opened up the Software Center or Software, also known as the Ubuntu Software Center or the GNOME Software Center. I searched for Spice Up, and once it came up, I clicked the Install button. You can change the source of where it's coming from. As you can see, it's installing the flat pack using the Software Center. Once it's completely installed, it will change to an Open button, and then I have a little icon of a trash can to allow you to remove or del delete the program from your system. And you can open the program straight from the software center by clicking the open button. The third method is by installing the elementary uh, OS app center on your system. You can add their PPA to update the PPAs and then say sudo apt install the app center. Open up your app center which looks very similar to the software center. Look for spice up, click the uh, install button and it will install it on your system that way. Now before I go any further, spice up was designed from to be used with elementary OS. So this is one of their apps for the elementary OS system that will work for the Ubuntu and Debian based systems, or at least most of them. The, the fourth method is by installing it from the source code from GitHub. Now I'm not going to get into that. That's more for the advanced or middle uh, advanced Linux users. Once it installs on your system, it should install somewhere within your menu of your system. As you can see here, mine's in Office and click on Spice Up at the bottom. Once it loads, it's going to look something similar to this. You are not going to see a presentation on the side. It'll probably be grayed out or whatever color your theme is on your system. That's because I tried to create a two-slide presentation. Then I decided to take a picture or a screenshot of my welcome screen. So the first time you load it, you'll be greeted with a new presentation or open file. Now, if you've oh, once you created presentations, the last few will display on the right-hand side. Once you created many presentations, you'll probably have to click the open file if you want to go to one that's not displayed on here. And you click the open file, choose your presentation, and open it up to edit or view it or do whatever. To make a new presentation, you click the new presentation, and it will bring you up some templates to choose from. Now once you click the open file button, as you can see here I had this one called Spice Up Presentation. It will be the Spice Up Presentation and it will include the extension .spice. So this is not compatible with the PowerPoint or LibreOffice and Press. So you can't open this up in those two programs. You'll need the Spice Up program to create and to open it up. Now once you get it created, you can export it to a PDF and upload it to web pages so that it will look very similar, but you can scroll through the pages through a PDF viewer. So once you click the, the new presentations button, you'll be greeted with some templates to choose from, and I chose the blue one when I created the two uh, slides slideshow. So once it opens up, I did, it had some text to enter your text here. I entered my text there, and then this said my presentation, which is your title. You can click into it just as you would PowerPoint presentation and you can change the text here. Now once that you click within the text of a, a presentation this toolbar will change. It will then become your text toolbar. So within your text toolbar it started out like a, with a white text. You can click this button here which is your font color. You can change the font color by going from white to another color. In this case I chose to change it to yellow. So that allows you to change the text color. Let me scroll down here. 
here is the actual toolbar, the text toolbar, so you can change the color of the text, you can change the font of the text by hitting the drop down list and selecting a different font. You can change the size of the font by going increasing to make larger fonts or decreasing for smaller fonts. You can change it to extra bold, bold, underline, italic, so you can change the, the, the font style here. So I've got the numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's the font color, the font, the font size, the, the font style, the alignment, in this case the center line, you can change it left align, center line, right align. You've got the bring forward, bring back to clone the text that's selected or to delete the selected text. So this becomes your text toolbar. Now the one above, if let's say now if I click somewhere in the background, this toolbar will immediately change. It will keep the same appearance, but the buttons will change to do something different. Since they're not selected text, you're now selecting your background, it now becomes the background toolbar. So by clicking this button allows you to change the background color. It allows you to change the pattern of your background. It allows you to add a transition to your background and by dropping down you have multiple transitions to choose from. And these buttons really work with your text features which is still to bring forward, bring back, except you can clone a background or delete a background. Here it just shows you the example when I originally had blue and I came in here and chose it the, the black lining which is the center one at the top. There's your dark black, your gray, and in the center is the, the black lining. I chose a no transition for my first slide and then from then on I added a slide. Now there's multiple ways of adding a new slide. You can hover over the thumbnail and it will create a gear. Clicking on the gear will create a pop-up menu where this is now selected, this thumbnail, so I could cut it, paste it somewhere else if I had a lot of them. I could copy it which allows you to keep the original but copy and paste it somewhere else. There's the paste. I could delete the selected uh, slide. I can create a new slide by clicking here and it will add a new slide below. I could duplicate the slide so I could clone it or I could set it as a file preview. So here I chose to choose the new slide and it automatically keeps the same properties and the same background and color as this one. You can always go through and make those changes since that's not text. Now there is another toolbar. Once you click here and it's blank, you might say, well I can't click the text to change the text color. You then look at the top toolbar. The top toolbar has the name of the, 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 of the selected slide or the slide show. In this case I haven't given it a name and I'll show you how to name it in a moment. This is your, let me scroll down, here's your number one which is your undo, your redo, your insert a text box, your insert an image, your insert a shape, Number six is the presenter notes. So if you're the presenter and you would like to uh, click the presenter notes and type something at the bottom of the slide, only the presenter, if you're at the laptop, can see it. The audience will only see the slide. So that's the presenter notes. You've got your return to the welcome screen. You've got your export to PDF. So if you click this button, you can save it as a PDF file. When you're finished or if you're, while you're working on it, you'd like to preview it, you can click the number nine to start the presentation. This will minimize it to your panel at the bottom. This will maximize or restore, and this closes it out. So this is your top toolbar. And these buttons, if you can't remember, are here. Now, if you also can't remember, you don't want to go to the website, you can hover over each of the, the buttons on the toolbars, and it will give you a tool tip with the name of a description. So here I chose to insert text, I added some bullets, and I created this little slide. The, another way you can add another slide to it, you don't have to hover over and click the gear, you can click the plus. By clicking the plus will also create a new slide with the background color. You can always go through here and change your background colors or you can add a different transition by clicking the drop down and selecting a different transition. And these are the default transitions you have to choose from. As you can see here I select the insert text and added two lines of text. The second button was to insert an image so I click this, found an image on my system placed it within the presentation. Now if you edit the image that's stored somewhere on your computer and you save it, it will eventually update and make the changes here so you don't have to delete this image and re-upload the new image. As long as it's linked to an image on your system, it will change as the image changes. Uh, you can keep clicking the add either way. 
you can add a shape by clicking the insert a shape you can add the shape this allows you to change the shape colors so this becomes your shape toolbars with two main buttons these are the same names this is your uh, color and this is the where you can change the shape to make it rounded edges or more squared so looking at this toolbar here is your roundness you can go more to the right to make it a circle or you can go more to the left to make it squared edges you can grab these corners to resize the text box you can change the color by click once it's selected clicking shape color to change any of the colors you see here then you can place text within that shape or you can multiply add multiple shapes on top of shapes within your presentation again you can add images so that was a little short slideshow that I did once you're finished you can sit start the presentation and you can look through the presentations to give it a name you can go back to your welcome screen you can hover over it and it'll make a little gear and this is where you type in the name let me minimize it and let me show you the two presentations that I have created for an example so let's go to spice up here's the two that I have examples if you want to name them you click the gear you type in whatever name you have here and click away from it and it will assign that name to that presentation it will automatically give the extension .spice you don't need to include it now if you got a different resolution I have a 16 by 9 resolution aspect ratio you can hit the drop down and choose the old monitors square monitors or whatever aspect ratio you have on your system the open file button that's basically the same thing here to open a file location of where you stored it as so if you don't know where you stored this you click this button and it will open up showing you it's my folder the documents and a folder called presentations and that's the two sample presentations and here's where I exported this one to a PDF file so if I were to double click this it will open up my PDF viewer so that I can look at the PDF that I exported so that this allows you to place it on web pages for someone that doesn't have the spice program on their system now let's go back to the actual program here here's the name of the program there's your redo undo or, or undo redo and I don't have anything to undo this allows me to insert text in my uh, slideshow I can change the color of it I can drop down and choose a font which I don't have anything selected yet so I'm gonna delete this because I don't want to add a text here that now changes since I don't have any text selected to the background so if I wanted to change the background color I could come in here and choose any of the background color and I could choose the pattern and I could choose to whether or not to add a transition to this particular slideshow so as you can see here this is a simple slideshow program it's not intimidated with a lot of menus it's not intimidating with a lot of buttons it's very simple once you're finished you can say return back to your screen or you can save it export it as a PDF file give it whatever name dot PDF hit the save button and choose the location when you're ready to present your presentation hit start the presentation you can navigate with your mouse buttons or you could use the left and right arrow keys on your keyboard to navigate through the presentation or if you had like a Bluetooth device you could pair it up and stand away from your computer so if you're walking through an audience you could transition through your slides of this program so as you can see here it's very simple but it, yet it makes very classy elegant slideshows for Linux users so if you're looking for a simple presentation program then you might want to give Spice Up a try. Hopefully this video has been helpful to someone and have a great day.